Good evening, viewers at home. Welcome to Education Beyond Walls, a new narrative. We are here once again tonight to give you an informative edu uh, education on things that you need to know and what is going on around you in terms of education. My name is Taiwo Olade Salvador, your host. We have a very interesting guest that we interviewed during the week, and she has a lot of information regarding the education of yesteryear, now, and the way and manner we need to move education forward. Education is a quality that one needs to focus for the total being of a child, which involves emotional, social, mental, physical, and cognitive development. When we come back from the short break, I'm sure you're willing, you're ready, because it's going to be very interesting today. I'm telling you, this one is, wow, super. Uh, make sure you have your pen and paper, and you listen very attentively to this special guest, very special one indeed. When we come back from this short break, we will unveil this special guest to you. Stay tuned, go get the popcorn and be ready. Welcome back. We are ready for a wonderful show tonight. So during the week, we went out to interview a very prominent, uh, very passionate about education. She is our second citizen before. And she took education, during the administration, she took education to a different level a different stage and some of the templates we are borrowing today also. And she schooled us because she's a teacher. I'm talking about our former deputy governor, Honorable Excellence Sarah Adebisi Chausson. Listen to what she said and what they are able to implement at that time and what we are enjoying today with the new administration, Babas Jide Sonwolu administration, how he took education very, very important too in his agenda. Take a look at, take a listen to this and hear our interview. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Mayor. I'm so glad that you're granting us this time from all your busy schedule. Welcoming you into my home with your team is a real pleasure. I like when women are in the forefront and, and I like to support my women at all times. I regard all women as my sisters. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're Thank welcome. You so much. The program is called Education Beyond Walls. Education Beyond Walls, mm -hmm. a new narrative, is talking about education outside the classroom walls, sure. outside the school, things that we need to know and be aware of what's going on. So today, we are going to talk about how can we reform education of today, borrowing from yesteryear. The yesteryear education is well planned, well informed. And you, as an example, coming from that system, a few questions that we are going to ask about. As a former teacher and a former deputy governor, you advocate on sound education for all girls. 
What is your advice for the parent of today? Well, first of all, let me just give a brief introduction of myself. I am Princess Mrs. Sarah Adebisi Shuson, OFR. The national honor came in through my educational efforts in the nation and Lagos State yes. specifically. Ah, well, uh, I am a professional teacher and I'm always proud to say that wherever, wherever I am, yeah. I trained. Initially, I worked mm -hmm. briefly and after my clerical experience in the, one of the ministries of Lagos State, I went back to school. Mm -hmm. Teacher training, College of Education, mm -hmm. and University of Lagos. I'm glad that at least I got to the topmost of education. I have a master's in education as of today, apart from other um, professional certificates mm. that are acquired later. You, the question is um, our girls, yes. educating our girls. Giving myself an example, I'm the only girl of my father. And I came from a river Rhine uh, community in the local government. And in those days, in the 60s, mm. you know, girls are denied education. Mm. But thank God for my father. May his soul rest in perfect peace. He ensured that I went to school against advices of others that, ah, let her go and marry after primary six. <laughs> But my father insisted, thank God, he saw the potential in me. And today, I'm sure I made him proud. He saw through it even sometimes when he could not pay school fees, because we have to pay school fees there. The education was free at the primary, Level. the Western region education then. He saw me through that in spite of challenges. Shame sometimes because when you don't pay school fees, you are driven out of the school. Oh, wow. But I pers he persevered, mm -hmm. and today I built on the foundation my father laid in my life mm -hmm. with my mom. And without, when I look back, that my father supported me to have an education. Mm -hmm. And what I am today is because I had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that now a lot of things have changed because now most parents have seen that it is not about marriage for girls, mm -hmm. especially young girls in this part of our, of our nation. But even in the other parts, I know most of them are now sending their children, their female girls to school, but not as it should be. They still believe in early marriages and they still believe that these girls should go out to work which is uh, dangerous for many of the girls, not only the girls, even the young boys as well. But education is very important for our young girls. We all know that. We know that they are going to be the mothers that will train children. Yes. Most of our mothers that we are not trained, that we are not educated then, a lot of them, they strive so hard later in, later in the years to ensure that their children get educated. Yes. We see that and most of the children are successful today. It's a, they, they say it in Yoruba. Let me just say it. Uh, because they now saw the, the, the advantages, many advantages of educating a girl child. A girl child will build the mother. A girl child, if opportunity, will be one of the policy makers. And because of the empathy, the, 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 the kind of motherly instinct God has gifted many women, it comes to fall in taking decisions, in doing many things in the society. So the girls' child education is something that I'm very passionate about. But I want to thank God today that at least it has improved. Yes. We have not yet reached there, mm. but it has improved. At least many girls now, they are 10, um, primary six, mm -hmm. junior secondary, and at most sometimes they just stop at senior secondary school when the parents cannot go further because of the free education that we have now. 
Uh, when I compare that, that in my own days, yes. many of my mates that we we, we, we we are in school for primary education, many of them got married. Mm. And they are great grandmothers today. Mm. But I thank God I have a grandmother today as well. But it was not very, very, very encouraging day. But things have really changed now. Wow, that was a very deep one. For why are you in the office now? I'm going to fast track a little bit. Okay. Why are you in the office? You implemented a lot of programs for to move education forward because of your background. Yeah. Many of the uh, programs that you started, such as the uh, technical vocational program, and many others. When you look at what is going on today. Is, there, is it where you want it to be, or what should we do to improve it? That's a very good question. Um, like you said, my background influenced my work yes. while in office. I've been a classroom teacher at the primary school level, mm -hmm. at the secondary school level, mm -hmm. and even a part-time for university. university. And now working at SUBE, I've been, I worked in suburb, I worked with Minister of Education, as an inspector of education. So I have so much exposure to what is happening in education. Mm -hmm. So that gave me an opportunity to put into practice what I've always written to my superior officers there. Mm -hmm. So I had no problem coming up with many of the reforms we had there, like uh, ensuring, I won't go deep into that, I know many people are aware that mm. some of the policies that we took then, yes. ensuring that schools, they are better, the, 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 the environments became conducive. Yes. We really went out aggressively. I lead, I, I became another, <laughs> I, I re I or let well, me uh, restart my uh, inspectorate uh, career into mm. my office there. I, I'm always in the form of the chief inspector that even with my team, we yeah. go out there into the classrooms yes. apart to see what they are doing in the classrooms and to assess the physical environment which should be conducive. And that came up with a lot of reforms. Thank God for my governor as well. Mm -hmm. He really supported us in education. So we saw many schools being rehabilitated, furniture being provided, and science being promoted. Yes. And sincerely, whenever I keep informed, my director then, he just retired recently, mm. he kept me abreast of what was happening in, with science in Lagos State because we built so many laboratories yes. and they won at different levels, even at international level, because of what we did in science, um, with science education in our schools there. Then we did the... the the personnel as well, our teachers, we all know teachers, the way they are considered. While I was in the classroom, I wanted to even be an activist mm. because of the conditions of teachers. <laughs> but my husband did not allow that. As I know you don't go and start, just be doing whatever you can do. And with that, we need to encourage our teachers. That was where we came up with the best teacher thing. Yes, yes. And the teacher, the best teacher, we gave a car. Mm and some other motivational packages. And that has been institutionalized in Lagos yes. State till today. Yes. And even expanded. Yes. I'm very happy and I thank Mr. Governor for doing so much, yes. Mr. Jide yes. Sangulu, for doing so much in education for now. Apart from that, we ensure that our children, mm -hmm. before you can go ahead, into, you know, I'm still coming to vocational. Yes. Yeah. There are some basic qualifications you have, you need to have. So we have to encourage a lot of free so that you prove your English, so that I can pass English at worst level. Mm -hmm. We did that and through other strategies, debates, uh, a lot of competitions, and, 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 and so much, so much we did, and it worked. And uh, for uh, technical vocational education now, our, we have some schools on ground about five located in all the five divisions. Yes. But they are not, they were not equipped. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we now looked into all these schools and also yes. we needed a lot to back up what we are doing to yes. make technical education uh, be viable in the states. Thank God for our state of uh, Lagos State House of Assembly. They passed the law yes. whereby we had that board in place. We rehabilitated the schools, mm -hmm. we got uh, them equipped, and we started encouraging. But you know, there was apathy hmm. to skills. Many parents want their children to go to the university. We have to start the orientation. advocating our parents. <laughs> that this is an area that is very profitable. Yes. When they, it's backed up with education, which these children have access to, they are better off that other artisans that have no, no. educational background. And from there, we got uh, support, even mm -hmm. international support. And the lady that was in charge was so passionate as well. And today, I'm glad that the level of technical vocational education in Lagos is increasing yes going higher and higher i'm very glad that we started yes. the schools were there but we improved on what was on ground and many of the children today they have a skill to sell yes. to the extent that even some came to my house sometimes mm -hmm. they go to come and repair condition air conditioner wow. and they now told me excuse me have you forgotten <laughs> i said i can't remember everybody wow. We passed through your school. I said through oh, Lagos State Lagos. schools, <laughs> but I'm, I was very happy. I have to increase <laughs> the money. I have to pay them wow. that day. So I think a multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. It has created a lot of multiplier effect, and I want to use this medium as what to, to appeal to our parents. Yeah. This is an area that we really need. Yes, we exactly. complain of uh the substandard of many work of this our artisans mm. when you allow your children many of them are so creative yes they are gifted in I this mean. area allow them to go i mean if it's university they can always go on to university there are universities that promote that they have these courses that they can study as well mm -hmm. and it's one area that sells so much especially when they travel abroad you know yes. how much you pay yeah. and that is why you have diy overseas because yes. many people can't afford to pay you pay per hour and you yes. know what to pay for mm -hmm. so you are always careful not to damage anything in those houses so i want to appeal that even our government the policy they should encourage more build more advocate more and let these children know advantages of why is skill even those who are graduates today still we are advising them to go and learn a skill instead of staying unemployed when you have a skill then you can't go hungry. You can't go hungry. So Excellent. that's my bit about it. Um, if you look at it today with the new administration, with the administration of Babaji Day Sonwodu, under the team agenda, vocation and technical is yeah. part of it. Yes. And number, I think number three of the agenda is to make education better yes. or greater for yes. illegal states. So, borrowing from all the implementation that you set, yeah. they are following that section right now. So, which is good. Like you said, vocational training is key. Yeah. I'm going to borrow your body. I always say that. It's your way. No matter how well read you are, you still need to have something going. Thank you, Ma. As a former deputy governor, and a teacher. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your time mm -hmm. in the office. You have the portfolios for education. Okay. What are all the things that you did? And maybe we can borrow some, or maybe they're doing some now. Explain a little bit to us. Uh, well, while in the office, like I said, because of my background, yes. it was easy for me to just start to work immediately. First and foremost, I looked into the Ministry of Education as well to see that the environment was conducive. Mm -hmm. And many, we had more than enough personnel that should go back into the classroom. Mm -hmm. Many young teachers that should share the experience they learned in the, the institutions in the classroom. First of all, we've, 
we deployed many of them back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. It didn't go down well with them, but it was it 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 answered a problem of shortage of teachers. teachers. We there are a lot of inadequacy of teachers in the classrooms. So teachers were employed mm. through rigorous, that's one thing I want to always advocate as well, not just anybody. Mm. The best of the best should always be the classroom because they are teaching. Yes. And we want quality teaching. So we had written, we have oral. Yeah. And so we employed only the best. Then, and this is what I want to advocate, especially now mm -hmm. that we are going to have a TSS, we have advocated this yes. for. We thank the federal government for doing it. But implementation is very key. Backed by law. They should back it up by law mm -hmm. and implement it uh, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Many countries why their education is very qualitative is because the best of the best are in the classrooms. Yes. And the best of the best should get the best the, pay. <laughs> the best pay as it's well. True. So it's work in progress and I, I'm sure we will get there. And apart from improving our teachers, a lot of trainings were put in place yeah. so that, especially computer, computer yeah. literacy, many of them, you know, by then, technology has had a foot oil, the world, everybody, our teachers, you need to know more than your pupils sometimes, but you find out that most of these pupils, they are exposed mm -hmm. by their background from the home and so on and so forth. So we encourage a lot of that. And even, there was a time I wanted to say, let's use it as a criteria mm -hmm. for promotion. So you know that whether you like it or not. You have to. You have to. We, there was what we put in place also. I don't want to forget that. And that is um, support our schools projects. Yes. Oh no. Actually it was initially initiated by Dr. Lee K. Pitman, but Lee he couldn't. Okay. He couldn't implement it as much. Mm. And when I came in, I just took it up, but we gave it another name. Okay. I think his was great, but I didn't have access to to his own uh, the, the, the whatever the, the proposal on yes. it. So I have to come up with mine based on my experience. Mm. But we met, we discussed. So it was same, we, are, we were in the same uh, platform concerning this. So what we did was Made, make this uh, support our schools transparent as much as possible. We were not involved. We just invite private sectors mm -hmm. or individuals. Mm -hmm. They you. supported us. Some, they rehabilitated schools for us. Uh, a lot of them. Yeah, Baba Jebusa Adebutu was, oh, okay. Baba, Baba really supported us so much. Toyota, uh, Chief uh, Michael Adiojo, you know, Many others, I can't remember, but those ones they come to my mind now. Because of our transparency, mm -hmm. we just say, this is our specification. This is what we want. Mm -hmm. Just follow our specification. We monitor what you do. Don't give us the money. Mm -hmm. And many people supported us. And in appreciation of that, yearly, yeah. we do a word that the governor yes. will be the exactly. one that is the chief hosts exactly. as such, just to recognize and appreciate these people. This also improved the physical structures in most of our schools. Yes. And like I mentioned, the laboratory, there were no laboratory. Yes. And we want these students to study science. science. We know what we will gain from science. So we so much, and like I said, God be blessed, Governor. Um, Mr. Rajvalo is now a minister, yes. so, but he still remains a former governor. He really supported us. He really supported us. Because without funding, without his approval, we cannot move forward. He did that. And the WIAC, you know, because we pay, it was uh, a policy that has been in place since Governor Ashwaju. Ashwaju has put that in place. You know, many of these parents, these, uh, the children that come to public schools, their background, are not very uh, okay. Many of them very poor background. So we pay, but if you don't pass, because we don't just want to be paid, if you are not qualified to go to the next class mm -hmm. by you uh, passing English and mathematics, mm -hmm. you are not going to SS3. SS3. 
So we use that as a measure to make the students sit up. And most of all these policies, we don't just take it on our own. We carry the parents along. Mm -hmm. We hold uh, parents for up. PTA then. Ah, <laughs> you know, PTA had the problem at the cost. So we changed mm -hmm. it to parents for up. Okay. And anything we say, this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. What is your view? What, is, what do you people feel about mm -hmm. it? And uh, it's, it's always very interesting. Even some of the parents say we face each other. I said, no, what government wants to do is okay. Why some say, ah, no. So no, we have to encourage hard work in our children. Uh -huh. And still today, the debates and many reforms we introduced. Oh my God. Anytime I hear my, I watch programs of uh, public school, hmm. in the media, I'm always so proud because it really improved their communicative skills. Yes. They speak so well now, and not because of any other thing, because mm -hmm. of the debates, because of, on Wednesdays, they have, they have a reading, uh, on Wednesdays. Yeah, Wednesdays, one Each hour class, yes, yeah. one hour they have to mm -hmm. read anything. Yes. Newspaper, old magazines, mm -hmm. read anything. And this has really improved. And this had continued. I'm glad it's that continued. I also benefit on that. Uh -huh. uh, with my NGO, I go to different schools to introduce reading and writing. Oh, um, it's still, it has still really helped. Yes. Really and it's still on. It's still on. Oh, it's still on. Yes, yes. I, I thank God for that. I know most times some of the ideas come from my um, directors mm -hmm. or wherever. Whoever brings an idea, we look at it, it works. And we give kudos. So, so. We recognize you for whatever idea. So I was not the only one. Mm -hmm. My team, we all worked together for most of these reforms. Mm -hmm. And these reforms, I'm happy that we, uh, myself and uh, Governor Sonwolu, yes. we are in the same administration there. Mm -hmm. And in most of my committees on education, mm -hmm. he was always involved. involved. He's a very um, intelligent young man. And so today, you can't be surprised mm -hmm. with his uh, acceleration <laughs> of, uh, yes, yeah. rehabilitation in schools. Yes. No, 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 no. It's really awesome. And what he's been doing with teachers, mm. the Microsoft training, yes. the technology, a lot of packages Same now, training. thousands of teachers. Yeah. Our teachers are very lucky in Lagos State. I don't know what's obtaining it. I know some other states are making efforts but i think this is what uh adopt in all our states if you know the theories of that thermodynamics and you cannot turn it into an internal combustion engine to move things in the farm what is it if you understand fluid mechanics and you cannot turn it to drive water from administration that came after you they are still using your templates they are improving on it especially now especially now mm -hmm. 
with the agenda with uh, our governor, mm -hmm. Mr. Babatunde, 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 I'm so passionate about him. <laughs> yeah, thank God. And the level that he took education to yes. in Lagos State, mm -hmm. it is never done. Yes. He borrowed from Governor Raji Fashola. He borrowed from our leader, Governor Ashwa Dubala Metunumbu, to Raji Fashola, you in the office, to Orelope. And I mean, Ade Fulure, yeah. and Ade <laughs> and now it has taken to a different level, which for the people of Lagos State are enjoying well in the education sector. But my question now is the infrastructure. I know you mentioned it before. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure. When I meant by that, the the building needs help. Yes. What Agreed. do you want to advise them? Okay. You mentioned something about having the private sector coming in, yes, and supporting. they did well during your time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure during this time also, we've seen a lot coming in now. Yes. Post COVID 19, mm -hmm. we need them. Mm -hmm. What can you we tell need them? We need them more than enough. Oh, well, uh, let me just comment once again, Mr. Governor. Yeah. He's been part of it. He yeah. has always been a stakeholder. And so he knows where the shoe pinch is in mm -hmm. education. Hence, he just uh, went into it with all the fire mm -hmm. that we see in Lagos State mm -hmm. now. When you consider the number of schools that have been rehabilitated, I think it would be nice for him to even put it out most of the time. So people mm -hmm. will appreciate what they are doing. And when you consider the population and the demand for education in Lagos State, Many parents yeah. from our time, from the times that education had always been improved in Lagos, yeah. they bring their children out and put them in public schools. Yes. And, you know, the economy has not been too Friendly. vibrant. So many parents, many, a, a, a lot of people at the lower background, a lot of them, their children attend our schools. Mm. Most of we have professional teachers. Yes. That's what I always tell them, that mm. there is no how in public schools, you will have professional teachers, mm -hmm. like qualified, not just S75, you find in some standard schools. And our governor, apart from that, training, which is very key. Mm -hmm. If you don't train a teacher, don't blame the teacher for not performing. Excellent. He's doing so much in that area. And um, refurbishment of schools, yeah. he's doing so much. Even when I was in office, the cry for more schools was so much. Huh? In Korodu, especially all these areas yes. that are developing. Yes. Oh, even me, I feel so bad most times mm. because the, the, the deluge of demand. And I'm sure by today, a lot of schools have been built in most of the areas. Yes. And for him now, the technology aspect is another key thing. Investing so much, even in tablets, mm -hmm. in most of these children, have in radios, right. those in rural areas, yes. is something that has boosted education man above. And the commissioner is an ex coming from the corporate, uh, the, the private yes. background. Imagine it with public. Mm -hmm. She's doing fantastically well as well. Okay. So, I want to say, post COVID, yes. we've all seen the challenges. Yes. Many people are out of job. Mm. Many companies are struggling to be on their feet. Yes. But nevertheless, we all advocate for education that quality, not just ed education. We want quality education. We still need to support education in the various states. And in my state, because so many, many, many demands. When you consider over 20 million mm. population in Lagos, we know what it is. And it's every day people are giving back to children. Yeah. I think that's another area we have to look <laughs> into. So the demand for education is so high. Government cannot do it alone. Mm. It struggles within infrastructure that is roads, yes. hospitals, other social uh, mm -hmm. uh, needs in the society. And we all, everybody will say education, education, education. Mm -hmm. Government cannot do it alone. Yeah. The corporate bodies, please, you still have to continue, not just uh, rehabilitating, but even building schools mm -hmm. in the uh, most areas that are just developing. 
I mentioned the Korodu. I know till today they are still complaining that they need more schools in yeah. the Korodu. They need more schools in uh, most of our suburbs because many people, the larger percentage of our population lives in those areas. Mm -hmm. So please don't be tired, corporate bodies. We need your support. Support education because they are the ones that are coming to work in your offices. Whether yeah. at the lower level, the, the, the basic level, or even at tertiary level, sponsor re researches, sponsor the lecturers, mm. and education, education, education all the way. Education is key in everything we do. Even today, sitting down here with you is true education. <laughs> and it's the focus of our, of our interview is education. Mm -hmm. But I have something different. I have another thing that I know you're so passionate about. What is S A S F oh. and why did you start? Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> that's one that's my baby. <laughs> Sarah at ABC Chosen mm. Foundation. After leaving office, I decided to say I can't just have benefited from government without mm. giving back. Mm. How do I do this? I consider my background mm. where God has brought me up from yeah. and I look at my village I call it village but my KPAC called it kingdom okay. because we had other <laughs> villages around and it so it's a kingdom mm -hmm. we call it a uh, in our know, local government through our political activities I know a lot of people have got to know about Irewe yeah. and ah uh, and I decided Women, the focus of any nation, the, uh, the, 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 the girl child, mm -hmm. another focus, and our youth, mm -hmm. My, the youth are one area I'm also very passionate. So these three sectors I focused on, mm -hmm. that what can I do to give back? So I decided that with this foundation, I'll be able to empower women, especially our um, grassroots mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. not politically now it cuts across yeah. it's not about politics grassroots uh, grassroots women mm -hmm. empower them improve their lifestyle through health talks through medical outreaches mm -hmm. a lot of things put in place for them and make them be more knowledgeable on how best to live mm -hmm. and not just attribute everything that happens to them to traditional factors and for the youth as well many of them you have to change their mindset yeah. especially this political era they see that a council ah, a council is not riding mm -hmm. a camry yes. ah, why not so many of them want to be in politics and this is these are the kind of things i'm reaching out that it's not about politics alone. there are many many professions you just try go to school attend this you will be the one supporting those in politics yeah trying to change their mindset, mm -hmm. to move away and go out there, learn other skills. We encourage that in our youth. I hold the summit every year. Okay. And apart from the summit, we reach out to when we have uh, some things that we offer them. We just had one on Zoom recently. Mm -hmm. And for the girl child as well, we support through trainings. Mm -hmm what they should know even while in school get prepared for beyond the classroom mm. the kind of things the soft skills they have to learn yes. etiquette mm -hmm. and so on and uh, education that don't stop don't say because mary stopped her gss you have to follow the mm. steps of mary you can go higher than that that me when i was in the secondary i have friends that stopped at secondary school but because i have a vision yes. and a dream that my background i will improve on the background i've been exposed to as a small girl hmm. and today with hard work i was able to achieve it and today by the grace of god i was able to achieve that so we do all this hmm. and we focus on health care yes. holding medical attributes testing them letting them know if your BP is much, it's not anybody that is doing you like <laughs> they normally say. And they call one thing in Yoruba, Aka. 
was for me like that. Mm. So there is nothing. I don't say there are things. Uh, things are this, there are some things that are traditional, but Sikh, Western uh, medicine first, health, health care, proper health care mm. first, because some of them we discover some of them they have cancer, some of them they have HIV. It was only through my medical outreaches there that we discover some some of this and we refer them and follow up with them. Okay. So we do medical outreaches. But that we've not been able to do because of this season we are. Right. Even our medical, uh, the women empowerment still reach out in one small way or the other. What we normally do is hold, we invite people to talk to them and give them some grants to help their businesses. And we go into the market to pick. Okay. We don't say because my party, because this is the party I belong to. We cut across tribes and across, uh, across party uh, leanings as well. And for the youths, yeah. I'm still very passionate about them. And I still continue to because many of them, they are really not, uh, the, 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 their, their exposure is limited. Mm. And the kind of things that occupy their mind is limited. And parenting is very key in these areas as yes. well. Most parents, they are not there for this youth. Hmm. If my parents were not there, with the rod, even then, rod, I can remember my mother, hmm, you don't escape it too. You, she will wake you up in the night and give you that <laughs> rod. I will never forget. I have a mark to show oh for that God. because I was, yes, I was a, uh, as a girl, but uh, oh I, play, I play so much. I play so much. So our parents, the times today have changed. Yeah. The times are changing. They have to be more there and not just about money, 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 money. The money, by the time you get that money mm. and those children, they've gone the other way. Mm. Then you start running that task get about them. Mm. So parents, you have to be there. Make them friends. Make them friends so that they can open up to you and seek your advice instead of peer influence. Peer pressures. That's what I do. That is my foundation. And with the help of so many people, mm -hmm. we've been able to continue. They support us financially with materials and everything. I know that your your baby, your NGO, is only in one area. For now. You didn't bring it to my area. You didn't take it to... I'm very jealous. I'm jealous that you're not even sharing with us. What do you think, uh, or when do you think yes. you will be able to, like, we have 57 local governments. Yes. You will have like a mini office in each local government and say, okay, this is a foundation that can empower each local government. Is that something that you're thinking about so I can go Well, I want to thank God that... My, my own local government first. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank God that while I was in office, yes. I was able to do to a larger extent of mm -hmm. that. We empowered throughout almost all the the all the local governments all the local governments so now we are saying that is focus <laughs> yes i yeah, want to remember what papa said that as a governor that uh -huh. charity begins at two yes ah, charity begins from ojo <laughs> because ojo is marginalized <laughs> we don't get much hmm. so i decided to start from my home front excellent give as much as possible yes to my own fr and from there mm -hmm. spread to other areas of Lagos states we plan to do that but okay. let's have a strong goal in my local government okay. area that is the, the, the that is what we have uh, our plan mm -hmm. um by the grace of god we got help we expand to we may not even expand to each of the local government okay. but under the division, at five. least okay, we yeah. have, and local governments under each division, yes. we can always reach out. It's a challenge, it's what we have in place, <laughs> and by God's grace, next year I think I'll take that up. I challenge. <laughs> uh, yes, it's a challenge to the foundation, but it's what we have in mind, mm -hmm. and I think really. For about five years or more than five years, uh -huh. we focused on not only Ojo, the federal constituency of Ojo, Ojo, Iba, Ojo Awori. Hmm. So now we're coming out. So you see us. Okay. Noted, everybody. <laughs> yes. Um, that brings me to another one. 
the love of grassroots in any community if you don't have a perfect grassroots <laughs> and a coordinated grassroots yes what do you want to advise the community the grassroots to have a bond in their community yeah that's a very good question because we have majority of our people are grassroots in all the states majority of people are that grassroots and we have to um, make all efforts to make our grassroots our people at that level yes. to work together when government gives you anything work together to ensure the proper use of these things you have access to any facility come together to adopt it and ensure that this thing is well maintained is well used and uh, people are grassroots if you bring them together they, yeah. they, they are used to communal things yes they will do it yes. it's just give them the opportunity come together select somebody among you who do you well who do we uh who is That's the right. head who mm -hmm. are they just have a committee in place mm -hmm. and you see them perform very well My so we have question. to take advantage of community uh, community participation, participation in most of the things we do my last question the last but not the last what is your advice for we're in lagos other states are copying after us what is your advice for the the women especially and our men post covid 19. well our men we want you to support our women in all the endeavors it's been tough, but yes. you know the women are always there. They'll be mothers to you. They are your. They regard you as their babies, apart from the children. Mm -hmm. So we need to support ourselves. We need we, it because two heads are better than one, and uh, the stress level can be down if you allow love within your home and outside there. And we put everything. We put our faith in God that things tomorrow is better than today. We, we are all in it, mm -hmm. and we will all overcome it. Our women need a lot of support. Men, women will always support you as well because you are the fathers, you are the heads of the homes. We recognize and respect you. And women, please, many of you make the home comfortable for your families as well. Whatever, well, no matter how small your income. We, my mother's killed through it. Yes. I've eaten a way through only, whatever. And today we thank God. Mothers, God help you. And fighters, God help you too. Your last advice for the youth in terms of their education. Our dear youth, you are the power of our nation. And we have you in higher rates mm -hmm. as the population. Please, education is key. Whatever you want to go into, education is key. And don't just follow, follow. Mm -hmm. It's not about follow, follow entertainment and music. You need your own profession. You need a skill. You need... Uh, an income to be self-independent tomorrow and be somebody that people, other people will look up to in the society. It's not about politics alone. Yeah. You can always support politics, but have your own profession. It's very key. Excellent. And be part of nation development. Excellent. God bless you, our youth. You are our pride. Thank you, so Thank you man. This is um, the beginning of our interview because we are still coming back. In regard to their assignments, the challenge I gave you. <laughs> yes, definitely. We're still going to come back yes. and update on that. Yes. And for now, I want to say thank you, Ma. Thank you for the legacy that you've left and the improvement we are seeing today. We thank you for that initiative at that time. We, we thank you for you. successive government as well, taking it up and uh, enhancing it. Yeah. And for all my colleagues still in government, yeah. Kudos, God help you. Do it much more better than you made it. Thank you. God will reward us all. Thank you all for listening and for watching Super Screen. Super Screen. <laughs>I'm sure you learned a lot that was very deep and she spoke about a lot of things and I'm sure that you learned from that and things that you can now take up and she advised the parents the youth themselves and the government and things that government can add more for us this is Taiwo Olola de Salvador
saying thank you and good night.